Okay, today I'm just going to go through uh, two very quick things. I'm going to look at taking a stereo audio track and how to convert it into a mono track from within reason. And then I'm actually going to look at taking a polyphonic uh, track to bounce to MIDI. Now a number of people do confuse I a mean, mono audio track is the best track to bounce back to MIDI, but that's not the case. It's got to be a monophonic track. What I've got here is I've got the Thor set up and I've got myself uh, obviously a very, very simple little bass line, a few uh, notes overlapping. So the first thing I'm going to actually do is just simply take that and we're just going to bounce that in place. And straight away you'll be able to see, here we go, we've got ourselves a stereo track. This is quite simple to convert this into a, a mono track. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to insert myself, um, I just have, actually you can use a number of different devices. So in this particular case, I'm just going to use a stereo imager because it's going to be quick and dirty and then I'm actually, I'm not really caring too much about the audio. So the first things I'm going to do is put these both to mono, flip the rack to the back and I'm going to remove the right input. If I actually bring down my mixer, you can already see now that is now a mono track, whereas before when you had it, it was both wired up. So if I flip that back around again, quickly wired up for you again. Stereo, we've got yourselves your two lanes, take that one off, we've gone into mono. Quite straightforward then, all we need to do now is we can click on that and we can go file and the option you want is bounce mixer channels, yeah? So I'm going to select that and make sure you have the second option. If you have the first option, it tells you all exports will be in stereo and that's not, you, that's not what we're after. So second option down, I'm going to have the loop into the track and here we have our mono audio track. Um, and that really ends the first part of this tutorial. The second stage of this tutorial is actually going to be looking at how to convert an audio track into a MIDI track. As I say, it doesn't have to be mono. Ideally, what you want though is a monophonic track. And in this particular case, this isn't a monophonic track. There's a little bit of an overlay, not a heavy overlay, but there's still an overlay. So if I was to take this track now and to convert this into a um, MIDI track, it's not going to capture all the data. And in fact, I've done the classic mistake of um, not changing the transpose type. So under stretch and transpose, we should be in vocal. Then I'm going to right click and now I'm going to convert it again. And if we go into this, I can I know because this was like one of the reasons I, I set the Thor up in the first place is I knew what notes I should be expecting and straight away I can see I'm missing two G's out of this. It's done quite a good job of what it's done in the way of converting it, but it has dropped and missing notes out. So I'm just going to remove this track and I'm actually going to use this track what we've done. So what we've got here is, is what I think of the, the rhythmic pattern of that bass line. And I'm actually going to use this data to try and split this track up a little bit more. So the pitch converter has more of a chance when it's trying to convert it, it will sleep it back into MIDI. And what I'm going to use this for really is to gate this data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put myself in a 14-2 mixer. Just wire it up. It's in mono, so I'm just going to leave it going in mono. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mod envelope out of this subtractor, and I'm going to put it into the uh, level in. So what I'm going to be doing now is controlling the level. It doesn't really matter where this level is now set because it's actually being controlled externally by CV. I'm going to use the decay, which is obviously going to set the effectively a, a gating effect. So I'm just going to bring this down. And we don't need to hear the subtractor, so we can just turn that down as well. So, so now, as I say, this is going to be gating this level here, so it's going to be opening and closing this off. And by opening and closing it off, what we're going to attempt to do is to put more gaps in this audio stream. And the reason we want to do that is then the pitch editor has more chance of picking up 
the individual nodes. So what we're going to do again is under file, we're going back to the bounce mixer channels again. Make sure that our new mono track is highlighted. Obviously I can, I can work this on the stereo track as well. But I've set my mixer obviously into the mono track. Same settings that we had before, which is the second option there. We were doing it for a loop and into a new track. I'm going to click OK. And you can see the audio, and I can probably actually adjust um, my mod envelope and probably bring it up slightly. But you can definitely see now, we've now definitely got lovely gaps in between. So now this time, we're on vocal. That's the important thing, is to make sure you're on vocal. When I bounce this uh, over to MIDI, I now have all my notes. Okay. The length of the notes might be off, and that's obviously something which we might have to change and clean up afterwards. But now, as far as I care, you know, this, this is ready to go. So, let's just quickly pull over a patch and have a quick listen. And that really ends this tutorial um, of how to convert audio uh, into a mono track, also how to convert a audio track into a MIDI track. Other things you may want to look at going forward is you might have quite a busy track that you're trying to bounce out. Don't forget, because it's now uh, inside the mixer channel, you can use all the goodness of the mixer as well. So you know, if you if you really needed to, you can obviously start. Um, start using your EQ, start using some high and low pass filters to start filtering out the data just to get to really the, the section that you want. You know, don't be scared of, say you've got a bass sound and there might be quite a lot of high frequencies in that bass sound. Cut them out. Just chop them off. You, you don't need it. The pitch converter doesn't need to convert it. Just get to your raw data. It doesn't matter how terrible it's sounding it's what the pitch converter is going to do with it. That's the important bit because we're after the MIDI. Okay. Thank you for watching.